let's have a round of applause for Jerry for getting all of this together and for putting up with the hotel and some of the issues. <laughs> Didn't he do a great job? <clears throat> it's always a pleasure to be. This is a great conference. Uh, one piece of really good news, uh, I'm not going to take my clothes off, so don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> all right? <laughs> I know the women are disappointed, but okay. What we're going to do today is we're going to cover a topic uh, about, that's in Vita 49. Now, if you notice, about five presentations before mine, Vita 49 was mentioned, but it really wasn't mentioned in much detail. So I'm going to give you kind of an overview, a tutorial of what Vita 49 is <clears throat> so to kind of show you why it's so important. We're going to go through some of the standards, some of the applications, and some of the influence that Vita 49 has had. So what's the rationale? First of all, traditional systems that have been out for a long time for radio and radar and so forth used what's called stovepipe architecture. What that means is that all of the wiring that goes from the RF to the IF to the A to D converters was typically done with custom cabling that was laid out according to a particular architecture based on the application that was to be done. And it was not very flexible in terms of doing something different. What the Vita 49, or as it's also known, VRT, which is Vita, uh, Vita Radio Transport Protocol, VRT is the same thing as Vita 49, what it does is it digitizes the signals as early as possible, cl as close to the antenna as possible, and then routes the digital uh, signals, the digitized signals through digital switched networks to implement the connectivity for different systems. And if you notice, the, the red lines are, represent analog signals. And in, in the case of going to the VRT, what you're seeing is the, uh, the blue lines have largely replaced a lot of the, the red lines, the analog plumbing, if you want. So that's the rationale for Vita 49 or VRT. And the whole idea is to standardize on digitized signal packets that carry information from receivers to processors to do all kinds of applications, including radar and, and uh, communications, and also to communicate the context data. That's the data that's uh, about the, re the, the receiver, the tuning frequency, the, an the angle of the antenna, and so forth, to convey that to the processor so it can put the signal that it gets into context. Beta 49 is enhanced now with new capabilities that we're going to be looking at going into the future for the next rev of the standard. The applications that we're targeting for Beta 49 are all of the traditional government uh, radar, communications, say GINT, EW, uh, data acquisition, spectrum survey, spectrum management, adaptive radios, cognitive radios. Vita 49 applies equally well to all of these types of systems. So what is it really about? First of all, the Vita 49.0 is a first standard that was, I think, adopted in 2007. You have a typical radio receiver system that has the typical blocks, the antenna, the down converter, uh, A to D converters, and then digital down converter. And what happens is with the VRT spec, you have now a standard way of delivering the sampled IF data from the digital down converter across a link that contains precise timestamp information about that signal exactly when it was acquired. That's really important for uh, time of arrival applications for beam forming and for other SIGINT where they really want to know exactly when the signal occurred. But these first Vita 49 systems were still controlled kind of the old-fashioned way. That is, there were, there were custom interfaces that delivered the control information, the tuning, the, uh, the antenna angle, and so forth. All of those parameters that have been programmed into the uh, hardware are delivered uh, as information now across another packet that goes into the VRT standard, which is called a context packet. So you have the data going through the VRT data packet, the, all of the information about what the receiver was doing, its operating mode, is going through what's called a context packet. Together, these two packets constituted the, what's called the VRT information stream, which then went to the VRT receiver, which was able to decode these packets and implement whatever the application needed to be. This, again, it does allow for a lot of flexibility in terms of, of applications. Vita 4900 was a good start, but 
it didn't do a lot of things that we need to do in these applications. For one thing, it didn't do anything for transmitters. How do you, how do you handle a transmitter? A transceiver, you know, it's very common. Radar needs a transmitter. There was no control of the radio equipment. So how do you, how do you control it? The old fashioned way? There was no interrogation. Is my system working correctly? Um, is, it, is it healthy? And also, what are its capabilities? All of these things were missing in the Vita 49.0. And lastly, there was no support for uh, transferring spectral data, which is a very common application for doing spectral survey. So uh, you have to do these things in virtually all of the systems. So th this lack was really the rationale for the Vita 49.2, which is the, the new version of the spec that's currently under review. And I want to go through just some of the things that Vita 49.2 is adding to the very popular Vita 49.0. First of all, IF data packets in 49.0 is being replaced now with signal data packets, more generic. Why? Well, because now not only can you move data from the receiver, but you can also do different types of data. You can do a wideband IF not, and, and baseband, not just the IF that was in the Vita 49.0. The other thing <clears throat> is that we maintain the, the backward compatibility with the 49.0, so the old packets can still work. The other thing it adds is the ability to transfer spectral data as a signal instead of just, just IF data or RF data. It also adds signals, signal packets for transmit along with a timestamp so that the transmitted waveform that you're sending out can be controlled and scheduled for transmission at a precise clock tick. Very important for things like radars, for example. And this, this then gives the capability of precisely controlling the timing, if you want, of the signals and allowing a broader class of signals plus the transmit capability. We also have, in the Vita 49.0, in the context, that's the information that comes along with the signal, we had a lot of different things that were, that were communicated. 49.2 adds even more context information about the signal. Again, it's backwards compatible to the 49.0. The other thing that context packets are being used for is to control, uh, is to uh, uh, support data transfers from transmitters. So not just coming back from the receivers, but also how is, the, how is the transmitter behaving? What mode is it operating in? So a new extension, if you want, of what context packets really do. And new in 49.2 is control packets. These did not exist in 49.0. So control packets now allow you to control your radio, and it allows you to um, control both receivers and transmitters to tell them how they should operate. It also allows you to have the same format in terms of the, the control information as the context packets. That gives it some nice uh, consistency across the, the packet structure. It also allows you to query the receiver or the transmitter to say, um, is the control that I just issued successful? Is there an error? Was it successfully completed? You also can query the receivers and transmitters to tell me what are your capabilities? What kind of a radio are you? What, what's your tuning frequency? What angle can you point your antenna? What kind of um, uh, gain and bandwidth can you give me? So the, the uh, control uh, packets and then also are able to, to interrogate the system to tell the system exactly what that receiver or transmitter asset is capable of doing. You can also set up um, sophisticated scanning modes and looping modes and so forth. So 49.2 really adds a lot to the capabilities of a radio based on, on uh, Vita 49. Now, any successful standard gets adopted and used. And so one of the first things was there was a group <clears throat> that uh, wanted to use Vita 49 specifically for spectral survey. And so what they did was they took a subset of the Vita 49 specification, and they simplified, for example, the data packets to only be fixed point, to only have certain structures and certain packing that would make it very efficient for processors. So this was a processing efficient, uh, 
uh, definition within the 49, Vita 49, that was targeting just spectral survey applications. Uh, transfers are across UDP or TCP. This was approved in uh, 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 August of this past year as a subset. So that's one use case of, uh, of the Vita 49. Another use case is JOSI. I don't know if uh, many of you have heard of it. It wasn't widely publicized, but Office of Naval Research set out an objective to develop a set of spectral standards for efficient, cooperative, uh, uh, non-interfering use of EMS, primarily for the battlefield, to develop strategies for fighting wars using electromagnetic warfare, if you want, and, and assets that are out there, both you know, friend and foe. So what they did was they gathered a group of 11 industry experts that had expertise in communication systems, electronic warfare, and uh, RF spectrum standards, and we were among the companies that were invited to participate. What this group did was it took the best standards that were already existing that could be applied and combined and kind of blended together to get the job done that this, this mission was. And so, for example, they chose uh, IEEE uh, uh, 1900 for the uh, dynamic spectrum uh, um, uh, uh, um, portion of it. They used a SSRF for the uh, spectrum management, and they chose Vita 49 for the connectivity to go between the elements in their system and the, the rest of the, of the other subsystems. In the case of Pentec, bringing it kind of down to home, we had a customer who had been using one of our modules for years, and he said, I want a special timing function built into it, and I want you to deliver that data along with the timestamp and some other information. I want you to deliver that to me across PCI Express. So he had very, very precise, absolute, down to the, the very clock tick in terms of sampling is when his data was going to be acquired. and so. What we did was we said to him, gee, you know, <clears throat> Vita 49 kind of already does this. Why don't we use Vita 49 to implement your application? And he said, yeah, of course, why not? That's great. So one of the things, so we did, and we, we just delivered it actually last week. So the point here is a good standard is one that kind of gets adopted, not by mandate, but because it works. Okay, and it's, it isn't that extra. We have to do all of the things that Vita 49 does. This just gives us a standardized way of doing it. Another application, uh, another application kind of going up the chain a little bit, could be a synthetic aperture radar system where you need a software radio that has receiver, transmitter assets, it has power amplifiers, it has uh, an a array antenna. This might be on a UAV, for example. No moving parts, it's really a nice way to, to do radar. But again, if you build this according to a Vita 49.2 standard, you can handle the transmit packets, you can handle the receive packets, you can handle the control packets, you can handle all the context packets to implement that radar transceiver with precise timing of exactly when the outgoing pulses go and your range gate for looking at signals coming back. So it's, it's really a, a, a really nice way to implement systems going forward. You can imagine that, that the SIGINT community is very interested in this, people who are just looking to, to gather information, listeners. So you have a wide class of different users or consumers of signal intelligence information that could come from a large number of receivers. Well, if you do use the Vita 49 standard, what you can do is you can connect the assets that you have out there for acquiring the data to the users who are consuming the data using Vita 49. Each user can request assets from the, from the different deployed radios to gather the information that he or she's looking for, and it gives you a lot of flexibility. Not only can you acquire just what you want, but you can also set up the receivers to do beam forming because that's, that's all done within the same Vita 49.2 capabilities. So it gives you a lot of different functions and uses for a common set of radios built on the Vita 49. Just in December of last year, the Navy awarded to uh, Northrop Grumman a TURN uh, contract, Tactically Exploited Reconnaissance Node, 
It's, it's, I don't know who made that up, but it's, it's a big name. Anyway, what it is, it's a set of uh, drones, a fleet of drones stationed on small littoral ships. These are ships that can get close to the shore that can be deployed from the ship to go out and gather information within their, their uh, radius of operation. And so the whole thing here is to have management of all of these different drones. Vita 49 offers an ideal solution because what it can do is it can control the operations of each of those, could be a hundred different radios on each of those, uh, you know, the hundred different drones out there. They all may have a mission. They may need to have that mission coordinated am among them. Um, but the ship system can then send over radio links the Vita 49 protocol packets back and forth uh, and do the complete job in an organized, consistent way. Also, a SATCOM link from the ship can convey packets up to a central facility where like, it's like a command center where they may aggregate the information from multiple ships to do a more strategic or over, you know, big view of what exactly needs to be gathered in terms of, of uh, surveillance. So there's a lot of applications from a small board up to a huge deployed system like this turn that Vita 49 lends, it, lends itself very well to. So re really the benefits here is a standardized uh, signal data and metadata transport also with the control functions and everything added. It's very flexible. It allows you to reuse the same radio platforms for a lot of different uh, uh, implementations with flexible kind of programmable connectivity to get rid of that stove piping and cabling. Very high precision time stamping. This is critical for things like uh, uh, time of arrival and beam forming applications. And um, of course the control and the status. So again, a wide range, a lot of different flexibility here. If you're gonna do a radio system, why not, why not do what you have to do, what you're gonna have to do anyway, why not use a standard like Vita 49 or 49.2 to get the job done? Now last, last slide, the most successful standards that, we, that, that, are, that are developed are the ones that have a, a critical uh, a mix of members in the working committee from government, universities, and industry. Now, Vita 49 has government uh, participants, active participants, who are the users, the people who are going to buy these systems, telling what their requirements are. We have university participation, Georgia Tech, Johns Hopkins, uh, uh, APL, uh, MIT Lincoln Labs, Penn State. These are the people who are the scientists who can help with like, like what, 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 what do we really need to do from an uh, applications uh, standpoint. And then lastly, we have industry participation from a lot of folks in this room who are saying, well, we are going to have to build hardware. These three different groups interact the scientists, the industry, the guys that have to build it, and the users to produce standards that are really meaningful and important for the industry. Uh, it started out, uh, Vita, Vita 49 started out in 2004 with kind of an idea. It's progressed through a lot of stages as any good standard will. It, you know, it will evolve over time. If you'd like to get the standard, of course, you can go to Vita.com and download it to learn more about it. Anyway, I went through that kind of quickly because I know it's, lunch is coming up. Um, that's it. Are there any questions?